Hi everyone, I'm Greg Mack, Science Program Officer for Astrophysics with the Kavli Foundation. As part of what we're funding in astrophysics here, uh, it's the search, uh, search for life in the universe or the origins of life. And as part of that, we have partnered with the Laukeen Science Foundation for a new postdoctoral program that's with the Harvard University Origins of Life Initiative. And I'm happy to be joined today by the two inaugural fellows for this, Jenny Callahan and Javier Bortillo. Um, Jenny studies planet formation and astrochemistry, and Javier studies uh, RNA evolution, but I'll let them tell you more about themselves and their research. Jenny, do you want to go first? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat about my work. Um, so yeah, I am Jenny Callahan. I am a new PhD, now postdoc, just graduated from the University of Michigan and now at Harvard Center for Astrophysics. Um, I am very curious about planet formation and how we got the Earth that we have today and all the ingredients that we got on this little rock ball to form life and, and all of us. I'm, of course, also interested in planets outside of Earth. So we had a, a lot of neat exoplanets out there that have been discovered and surely there's life out there in the universe. So I'm really generally interested in how you form all sorts of different types of planets. We have really rich, rich water worlds, carbon worlds, etc. Um, and we can learn about how these form in the these objects called protoplanetary disks. So that is what I study using both observations in the radio and the infrared, and primarily I use models. So I put everything we know about the physics and the chemistry of space, in particular in these protoplanetary environments, um, and I try and make sense of these photons that we get from outer space. Um, so I'm very curious about astrochemistry, where are these weird molecules coming from, how do they form, when do they form, how do they get onto planets? Those are the questions I'm interested in. Great. Thanks. Javier, how about you? Hey, everyone. My name is Javier Portillo. I'm a one-year postdoc now in the George Church's lab at Harvard Medical School. And my research is pertaining to the RNA world theory. I did my, uh, my PhD thesis at Yale University and the Salk Institute on this particular theory. Um, and this pertains to prebiotic, to like the origins of life. That's how we um, see it here on Earth. And so the idea is that at some point there's some polymer that can do self-replication. It's thought to be RNA, although that's still up for debate and we don't have actual like, you know, bio, biological evidence of this. Um, but um, the idea is that there's this RNA that can self-replicate and in many ways, RNA can still, still basically runs the show in biology um, from, you know, the ribosome, which makes um, the, the proteins in your body. Uh, viruses and you know now the the cure for viruses mRNAs are RNAs and um, so RNA continues to evolve to this day um, and we can, it evolves through natural selection and it also evolves in the lab through directed evolution um, and so in in our lab we look at um, gene regulatory elements like uh, riboswitches and we do um, in vivo and in vitro evolution. Um, and we use bioinformatics and deep sequencing to track uh, the evolution of these RNAs. But the problem is that we have a really big data problem with these evolutions. We have hundreds of gigabytes. And um, with the advancement of DNA sequencing, um, now we can do it for much cheaper. So we're using supercomputers and machine learning to resolve patterns of evolution and eventually try to predict the evolution of RNAs um, for therapeutic use, but also for the origins of life. Great. So with this uh, postdoctoral program that's centered at, at Harvard, Harvard's Origins of Life Initiative is part of the Origins Federation, which is a consortium of institutes at four different universities that are all involved in, in different aspects of the search for life and the origins of life, these big questions about what's out there and, and um, how did life come to be. So you both were actually at the inaugural meeting for the Origins Federation that took place at Harvard back in September. So I'd love to hear a bit of what your thoughts were about the meeting, um, anything exciting you heard there, connections you might have made. Like, what was it like for you to be, be there at that meeting? I can start, I suppose, um, because it was the inaugural meeting, but it was also like my first conference as a postdoc, and it was my first week at Harvard, so it felt very new and exciting for me for other reasons. Um, and I just revisited my notes, uh, and I got all excited all over again. It's a really unique conference, uh, one that like I've never been to before, because it was very interdisciplinary. We had full-on astronomers thinking about loose gas in space all the way to biologists and everything in between, comets, planets, chemistry, everything, geology. Um, so it was really cool just from like 
a curiosity perspective to see all these different sciences and how we all approach the origins of life question differently, but in ways that like work with each other and they're are kind of succinct. Um, so in particular, I was really interested to hear from the exoplanet people and people studying comets. Um, and something that really stood out to me was that we all use um, chemistry to learn more about our objects. And I think we can use chemistry to connect these like pretty big um, dots between uh, cloud and star formation to planet formation to comets to planets and exoplanets. Like we can connect all these dots using chemistry. Um, and when I say that, I mean isotopolog ratios or ratios between the carbon and the oxygen we see that can help us understand how these all form and how these all connect to each other. So that was really great for me to see, to connect my research into this big origins picture. Um, and then it was also really interesting to see these biology talks. I haven't seen a biology talk in maybe ever. Um, so it was really nice to kind of just sit back and enjoy. But at the same time, we we're also like approaching these questions in kind of similar ways. We have these complex questions with a lot of data and we have to figure out how to sort through that data. That's something that all of these fields have in common. And so what Javi was talking about and what he works on machine learning, that's something that's happening in astronomy that we're starting to utilize to the best of our ability. These like fancy statistical methods, we're all trying to use these like really fancy tools um, to kind of probe through all of our data and try and make sense of all these weird things and find patterns in the noise. Um, so those are, those are some highlights for me. And then just, it was also really nice to meet these people from, um, all over the world, really, um, my future colleagues, people who we will solve these really cool and interesting problems together. So, yeah, I think that's what I enjoyed. Thanks. Yeah. So the origins of life research has always been a multi-field discipline. Um, and it was so nice and fantastic and such a pleasure to be in the same room as, you know, as, as astrophysicists like Jenny and, and biochemists and geneticists and synthetic biologists. Um, and it's so easy for us to sort of put our blinders on because we're just kind of like in the minutia of our work all the time. And it's so easy to forget like where we're studying this. For example, I where I look at the origins of life, I'm like 10 to the minus eight meters, whereby Jenny is looking at 10 to the eight meters. So relatively like the same distance um, in, in size scale. Um, so it's nice to have the perspective that you're not thinking about every single day. Um, and, you know, we sparked insane ideas that by talking to mathematicians who were attending the meeting and working with Jenny. I mean, Jenny and I even have some ideas that our projects can be <laughs> intertwined somehow. And so I think meetings like the, the Origins meeting um, are so crucial to actually getting our research into frame, into perspective of what we're looking at. And um, it was just such a pleasure to be at this meeting. That's really great. And I'm really glad that you're able to have those uh, perspectives and experiences. And kind of in thinking about that and also just thinking about the field in general, if I can get your kind of thoughts about, you know, why is this so exciting right now? There's so much involved with this or what really exciting things you come away with from the meeting? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, for me, at least on the astronomy side, I'm really excited about all of the telescopes that are online right now that we're just starting to get some data from, uh, namely JWST. So JWST has been in the sky for over a year now, and we've had three chances to kind of propose for time and interesting data from this telescope. And so just now we're starting to get in a lot of data. And it's really exciting. So far, people have just been putting out individual spectra of well, what we're looking at with JWST are these like planet forming regions, especially like the terrestrial planet forming region is what we're sensitive to with the JWST telescope, um, which we were not really sensitive to before, at least in this high quality. So that's something I'm really excited about that I think we talked a lot about in the meeting, especially when we talked about JWST. Um, so it helps us categorize these planet forming regions, but it also helps us categorize the atmospheres of planets, which is still wild to me that we can learn about an atmosphere of a planet like on the other side of the galaxy. So we're getting a lot of data right now, um, not just with JWST, but also telescopes that have already been around and we're just like piling on the data. And the more and more data you get, the more information you're getting, the more constraints you have on understanding this universe and how we can eventually get to the origins of life. 
So for me, the most exciting part of my field is that DNA sequencing and supercomputing resources have become so um, inexpensive and accessible now for multiple research groups. And as mentioned before, I think uh, origins of life at the nucleic acid level like RNA and DNA evolution um, is sort of limited by being able to process these data sets, which can be hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes for a single RNA evolution paradigm. And so as these resources become um, more inexpensive, um, more groups and more creative ideas can, um, can sprout to sort of try to answer these big data um, problems. And so I think also with the advancement of machine learning, and now we can take these massive data sets and get really, really fine grained resolution onto the details and the secrets of um, biological evolution at the nucleic acid level. Great. So another aspect of the, the fellowship program that you both are just starting um, it, is that you're connected not just with Harvard, but also with the other institutes that are involved in the, in the Federation. Um, so that's just one, it's, it's a really cool, interesting aspect, I think, for that too. But I wanted to hear what you're most excited about doing or what you're most interested in doing as you're starting in this, in this, in this program and like what you're really hoping to get out of it. I mean, there's so much. <laughs> um, I think I touched on it a little bit. I'm really excited about all the observations coming in, but I'm not primarily an observer. Um, I primarily work on these models to like make sense of observations that we get. So I'm really excited to just have like more data to play with. And the more data we get, we see more trends. And it, it is easier to answer these kind of complicated questions when we have a large data set and we can start to see trends. And these trends are things that I'll be able to reproduce with the models that I have, understanding the chemistry, the thermal environments, um, and its impact eventually on the planet formation and connecting the dots between planet formation regions and the exoplanets themselves. So I'm really excited to get in all this data and start solving some really interesting questions that are coming out. And with more data also comes more mysteries. <laughs> we don't understand everything that we're getting back. And so there's a lot of low hanging fruit right now that is gonna be taken and answered. And then there are also some weird things that we see there. Um, so there are questions that we don't even we know how to ask right now. Um, and so I'm really excited about, I think the next three years are gonna be really revolutionary in our understanding of how planets form, especially in the terrestrial forming region. So. I'm excited for the things that I don't even know what I'm excited about yet, uh, but I'm excited to be kind of plugged into each of these communities. Um, we're getting all the data through through Harvard, through the other universities that we're associated with. Um, and I'm so excited to work with observers, geologists, exoplanet people, um, and yeah, answer some cool questions. So for me, the question of the origins of life at the biochemical level <clears throat> requires really, really good chemists, requires really, really good geneticists, really good synthetic biologists. And the Federation has sort of brought in four powerhouse universities that I'm really excited to get the expertise of uh, the chemists that are at the other institutions, the um, synthetic biologists that are at the other institutions. and. Um, Luckily for me, I already had some practice with some um, collaborations in my PhD. Um, even now, um, we're still collaborating with um, my one of my thesis labs from my PhD. And so I feel like the only way to really solve this problem at the, like I guess, bottom up perspective of the origins of life is to bring experts from all these different uh, subfields within you know, biochemistry and chemistry and synthetic bio. Um, and it's really the only way that you can like make a dent at answering these really difficult questions. And so the Federation has done a fantastic job of connecting us together with these other groups um, from these other institutions. And so I'm really looking forward to continuing collaborations and fostering those connections uh, moving forward. That's really great. And I'll, I'll mention too, just because I didn't mention this before that along with the, the Cali Foundation providing support for the postdoctoral uh, fellowship program, we also provided support for the Origins Federation meeting. And it was really great to see what that meeting was like. I was able to attend that as well. Um, is there any, you know, as we kind of like wrap up this 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 chat with you both, because I'm really happy that you both were able to, to join us for this today. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add that might be separate from what you've already said? 
I, I can start with that. Um, so Jenny and I have been kind of talking about doing this like public facing part of like our research. So, you know, a lot of our research up to this point has been public funded. So we're trying to find creative ways to get into the community and spread this information. Um, so there's a program called Astronomy on Tap that just goes to like local breweries and it's nationwide. And so, you know, we've been trying to come up with creative ideas to give back to the public um, because of course, like our research wouldn't exist without the public um, uh, ta well, the, the taxpayer dollars. So we're we're really excited to sort of take what we learn and you know get our research out to the public um, so that they can have you know accessible knowledge to to um, the science that we do. Because sometimes it can be so opaque and so complicated, and science literacy is also you know such a challenging thing. Um, so I'm excited to work with Jenny and many others at the Origins um, Initiative and Federation um, to get this information out to the public. That's great. Jenny, do you want to add anything else? I don't know. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something I'm actually really excited about. I think just like general outreach and being able to talk about your research and make it accessible is so important. Every scientist should be able to do that or else what are you doing? <laughs> we're doing this for humankind, you know, we're doing this because humans are very curious about outer space, about where we come from. And so the stuff that I learn, I want to be able to communicate with the whole public. So yeah, that's something, stay tuned for an origins on tap of some sort in the Boston area. <laughs> um, I'm very excited, excited to start that. That's great. Well, we will definitely be staying tuned for that. And we will stay tuned to see how your progress goes throughout the fellowship. We're, we're so excited that you are the inaugural fellows for this program. And the foundation is very happy to be supporting this and adding a support to the, the Origins Federation through the meetings as, as well. And to partner with the Laukeen Science Foundation, as I mentioned before, for the Calvi Laukeen Postdoctoral Fellowship Program. So it'll be great to see what you all do. And thank you very much for, for talking with us today. Yeah, thank you for yeah, having thanks us. So much. This was thanks great. so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm.